maybe someday you'll get to the point where you'll see that I am a person, not a sexuality. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I grew up uh, in a conservative Christian home. I didn't really actually know I don't think any LGBTQ people until high school. I didn't even really know what that meant. So when I finally realized that I was gay, which was when I was 23, which is pretty late in my opinion to finally figure out a big part of yourself, I was home for a Christmas break. There was this anxiety that was eating me up to the point where I actually was sick. Like I would throw up like once a day because it was like eating me alive. It was Christmas Eve and I grabbed my parents and my sister and I called them into the kitchen and the only words that I could get out of my mouth uh, were, I date dudes. And I was like panicking. And then my parents and my sister were like, we know. And I was like, how, how the hell could you know that? <laughs> I, I didn't know that. <laughs> they were waiting for me to finally be ready to tell them. But I didn't expect a lot of pushback from both my church community and the LGBT community to sort of like, take a stance against the other one somehow. There was a point where I was unasked to be a part of church groups that I was in. One of my really close friends growing up, he asked me to be his best man in his wedding. Um, and then after I came out to him, about two weeks later, he called me and unasked me to be his best man. Um, so that was pretty painful. But I have kind of found this small community of people that they see me now for all of me not just one part or the other. I've started to find that maybe there's like a third path that's not, I have to believe this or I have to be this. There maybe is a way for me to embrace all of myself and find joy in every part of myself without needing to be one thing or another. That's where I'm at. <laughs> When I was in middle school, I became friends with a girl named Julie. Julie was much cooler than anyone I'd ever known, and I was stoked when she wanted to start having weekly sleepovers with me. One night during these sleepovers, I was sitting next to her in her playroom, and the next thing I knew, her lips were on mine. Kissing during sleepovers became our weekly secret as we got to know each other better, until a few months later when Julie decided she had a crush on a boy and didn't want to kiss me goodnight anymore. Later, Julie told everyone we knew what had happened between the two of us. And it was only then that I understood just how not okay this facet of my personality was with our classmates. Our peers and friends mocked us every time they saw us screaming, dykes, and I didn't really know what to do about it. Being super religious, I didn't even know what dyke meant, so I had a lot of questions. Was I one, and what did that even mean? The first time I ever saw real lesbians was Tegan and Sarah's video for Walking with a Ghost, and I was transfixed. I grew up in a loving family, and I never once doubted that my parents loved me. But to me, being gay seemed too much for this religious family to bear. I was so scared to tell them what I was actually about and what I had figured out about myself, so I didn't. I kept it a secret for as long as I could. One morning, my mom and I went to the California State Fair on a hot 103 degree day in Sacramento. After sweating it out in the morning, we went to lunch, and as we sat across from each other, my mom asked me the question I'd been dying to answer since middle school. Was I gay? I said yes. I could have never guessed what a beautiful and honest conversation my mom and I would have about who I truly was as she listened and understood this burden that I'd been carrying for such a long time. Not only did I know that I could be free, but I could also be fully and completely seen for who I am as a person. Better yet, this story has a super happy ending. I fell in love again, we share a cute house, we have two dogs, and we are a family. And best of all, every single night is a sleepover with a girl who always wants to kiss me. Your story was great, and it actually gave me a lot of hope at the end. Your story was so relatable to me, just to someone who was raised religiously like, and worked I was like a youth leader and worked at church camp. Like I was like, yes, I understand all of it. And I think like when you're raised in the church, it's not something that you get over losing. Like that felt like a grief to me. And so yeah. I really appreciated like this idea of a third path that you could have that's such a beautiful sentiment. Yeah. It's interesting, there seems to be such pressure to like come out and figure it out. And while I wish I would have come out earlier, I also, I had to be ready. And I'm glad that like I felt 
resolved within myself. And I was 30 when I came out, so I feel you on being like a little bit later, like <laughs> <Okay>. 30 is. <laughs> I think people need permission to do it on their own schedule. Yeah. It's not too late, <laughs> ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess the biggest question for me was, you, you talked a lot about us like sort of intrinsic fears you felt before coming out. Uh -huh. What was the thing you were most afraid of happening? I, oh, now I'm gonna get misty. I love my family. Um, and I think I underestimated how deep my parents' love is for me. And I think that that ended up, you know, being like, it's changed our relationship because I know that, um, you know, they are religious people and I think that was a hard thing. And I think that too, um, a lot of parental angst comes from wanting the best for their kids and wanting your kids to have an easy life. Yeah. I think like seeing how they reacted to me and how much they love me and supported me and now love my partner and, and support us has been like the best antidote to that like shame. Yeah, the friend that I talked about, um, I don't tell a lot of people about it, even my friends, um, because after it happened, uh, uh, I, I wrote him a really long letter because the last thing he said to me on the phone that day was, I love you, but I can't rationalize this choice that you've made with what I believe. And uh, I wrote him a long letter that said, like, I didn't, I didn't make a choice. Mm -hmm. That's like saying that I chose to be this height. I, I, uh, and I still, I still hope, I guess, someday that we'll be friends again. It's his loss, which I know is like a trite thing to say, but like you deserve people who are fully accepting of who you are. And I'm so sorry for that pain. Like that's unbelievable to me. I think it's such a precious experience that each of us go through, like whether it's tumultuous or amazing, it's ours. And yeah. so getting a chance to hear other people's stories is always so inspiring. Can we hug? Is Absolutely, that one? Yes. I was like, please let me hug. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a teacher. I am super fortunate to teach where I do now. We have LGBT educator groups and it's just accepted in my district in a way that I never thought that I would experience. I think it's good for kids to have a queer adult and it's not something I take lightly. It just feels like um, I'm congruent in all areas of my life yeah. and that feels really, really good.